welcome to episode 12 of .NET Concept of the Week. I know, I know, I skipped the last three weeks and I didn't post anything, but I'm back, so this is .NET Concept of the Week, where I explain a concept related to .NET programming every week in a short video. This time we are going to talk about hosting an ASP.NET Core 2.1 application in IIS. If you already hosted an ASP.NET Core application in IIS, then you probably already know the ASP.NET Core module, or in short, ENCM. This is a global IIS module, and we have to install this module if we want to host an ASP.NET Core application within IIS on Windows. Until version 2.0, this module basically started .NET.exe in a new process and proxied every incoming HTTP request to the .NET Core process that hosted the ASP.NET Core application. So until 2.0, every time you hosted an ASP.NET Core application in IIS, you had two processes, the W3WP from IIS and .NET.exe, which hosted your application, and the ASP.NET Core module made sure that this .NET.exe is always running and it also made sure that the HTTP requests hitting the W3WPRE are proxied to .NET.exe. So in this case, IIS worked as a reverse proxy. Now in ASP.NET Core 2.1, there will be a couple of changes regarding this ASP.NET Core module. One change is that the new version of the ASP.NET Core module supports an in-process hosting model. This means that you can tell the ASP.NET Core module to not start an extra .NET Core process to host your ASP.NET Core application. In this case, the ASP.NET Core application will be hosted directly within the W3WP process. This is by the way very similar to classic ASP.NET, since in case of classic ASP.NET, we only had these W3WP processes and those processes hosted the CLR and also the application. Alright, now let's take a look at this in practice. At the time of the recording, ASP.NET Core 2.1 is in preview stage, and as you can see, I also have Visual Studio preview here. I already created an ASP.NET Core 2.1 application, now let me quickly show you the behavior that we had with previous ASP.NET Core applications within IIS. For that, I simply deploy this app to IIS, I already configured IIS here, and I also installed the newest version of ENCM. So the application is deployed and started. Now let's take a look at it with Process Explorer. As you can see, we have W3WP here, and it started a .NET.exe child process. This hosts the application. As you can see, the application DLL was passed to .NET.exe, and this runs as a separate process, so IIS plays a reverse proxy here and passes the HTTP requests to this process. Now let's discuss how you can change this to the new in-process hosting. I go back to Visual Studio and I will edit the project file. In .NET Core 2.1, we can add ASP.NET Core module hosting model here, and by setting it to in-process, we tell the ASP.NET Core module to host the application directly in the W3WP process. I publish the application again, and once it's running and we take a look at the processes, we see that in this case there is no .NET.exe, we only have W3WP here, and if we take a look at the DLS that are loaded into this process, then we see that this really hosts the CLR, since we have coreclr.dll here, and this DLL here contains our ASP.NET Core application. Now if we want to switch back to out-of-process hosting, then we can either remove this whole block from the project file, with that we will have the default behavior, which is currently out of process hosting, or we can be explicit and set it to out of process. Now before I save this, let's discuss why Microsoft made this change. One thing about this change is that the architecture of the ENCM changed, it has now two main components, one is a shim that is deployed to the machine globally, and it is still installed with the Windows Server Hosting Installer. The other one is the request handler itself, which can be shipped as a NuGet package with this new architecture. Thanks to this architecture, you can have multiple versions of the ENCM running in a single IIS instance, and Microsoft can also update the hosting more easily, since they only have to update a NuGet package. Now the other benefit is performance, in-process hosting is faster. I have Netlink here, 
And remember, right now we have in-process hosting. With Netlink, I generate load on this application and here is the result. Now let's go back to Visual Studio and save the change. So with that, we change the hosting model to out of process. I quickly redeploy the application and here we have it. Now let's see the performance again with Netlink. Now please keep in mind that this is not an official test. This is just a simple scenario on my local machine. But here we have the result and you already see the point here. In process hosting was faster. This one here is the request per second value. What we see with red is the current request per second value for the out of process setup. And below that we see the value from the in process test. Before we end the video, let me quickly show you two other things. Until this point, we changed the hosting model directly in the project file. Now once you deploy this, of course there isn't really a project file in the deployment artifacts anymore. This value is actually stored in the web.config file here under hosting model and we can actually change it also here directly. The last useful thing I would like to show you is that in Visual Studio, in this case in this preview version, under properties and debug, there is a drop down where you can change the hosting model for your development environment. In this case, for example, I have here IIS Express and here I can configure that within this IIS Express, I want in process hosting. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you found this video useful and next week I will explain another .NET concept.